Okay, so um, it's nine o'clock. Um, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's new Zoom seminar. Um, so I think uh, this is uh, probably the first uh, time we uh, resumed the once one week uh, in museum seminar since the summertime is over. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just uh, welcome uh, today's speaker. So it's really my pleasure to uh, welcome uh, today's speaker, Dr. Hai Hui Shi. So Hai Hui currently is a full professor in the Center of Discovery and Innovation and the Hackney SAC uh, in University uh, Medical Center in New Jersey. So um, Hai Hui actually uh, completed his undergrad study, uh, MD study actually in China Medical University and then uh, continue his uh, uh, PhD training in uh, graduate school in uh, uh, Hama, uh, Hamamatsu uh, University uh, School of Medicine in Japan. So after he completed his PhD training in uh, biochem biochemistry and then molecular biology, so Hai Hui actually uh, decided to pursue his postdoc training in NIH uh, uh, with Warren uh, Leonardo in molecular immunology. Um, so it's make us sort of colleague. So uh, from 2006, uh, Hai Hui uh, become independent and start his research program as assistant professor in department of microbiology, uh, microbiology in University of Iowa. Um, and then uh, all the way up to the full professor in uh, uh, department of microbiology and immunology uh, in the, the University of Iowa. From uh, 2020, um, uh, Hai Hui actually uh, moved his lab uh, to Center of Discovery and Innovation um, in uh, Hackney Stack uh, University Medical Center in New Jersey. So the main theme of um, Hai Hui's lab is to seek in-depth uh, understanding of transcriptional and epigenetic, epigenetic control during T cell development and uh, in the thymus. Uh, and the T-cell differentiation in the context of acute inf infection, chronic viral infection, and tumor microenvironment. Um, from the beginning of Hai Hui's lab, um, uh, his lab has been exploring, uh, in employing the state-of-art uh, techniques, including mouse genetics, uh, molecular biology, uh, cellular immunology, and high-throughput um, ge uh, genomics, and then bioinformatics approach to delineate uh, regulation of, of different uh, critical aspects in T-cell biology, in transcriptional, epigenetic, and high-order uh, genome organization uh, levels. So there are three, uh, there are a, a, a several um, uh, main aspects Hai Hui's lab particularly interested in, uh, which including uh, delineation of novel roles of TCF1 and LEF1, and their cofactors during the T cell development. And second is uh, the transcriptional and epigenetic regulation of mature CD8 T cell responses. And uh, the same um, also uh, transcriptional and epigenetic regulation of TRAG and mature TD4 T cell responses. And the fourth focus is um, in Hai Hui's lab is transcriptional regulation of self renewal of uh, hemopoietic and then uh, leukemic stem cells. And then last but not least, um, his lab also interested in regulation of CD8 T cell biology by higher order genome, genome uh, organization. Um, with really productive and then uh, remarkable achievement, uh, have we um, um, received numerous uh, honors, which including American Cancer Society Research Scholar a merit, uh, merit Award uh, from Department of uh, Veter Vet uh, Veterinary Affairs, and then um, uh, Donald Dornard um, uh, Research Award for Outstanding Publication in Leukemia or Lymphoma Research. So I think um, today I'm gonna, we are gonna to, uh, hear some recent work uh, from Hai Hui's lab about T cell um, uh, biology with different transcription regulation. Uh, so with that, thank you so much Hai Hui, uh, be with us today. Um, so we are very much looking forward to your talk. Okay, uh, thank you, Chuan. Uh, thank you, Xiaolei, for inviting me. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, give a talk on this platform and then uh, to share our recent funding, some uh, uh, recently published, some uh, no, unpublished, or just um, 
point out along the way. Uh, so uh, although I changed the title a little, but uh, uh, the essence is uh, the same. Uh, I just want to uh, show this um, figure that everyone, everyone is quite familiar with. Uh, so during our, whether this is CD4 or CD8, the T cell response, the primary response uh, is quite robust and uh, followed by generation of memory T cells. And the secondary challenge of the memory cells gives uh, more enhanced, um, uh, more robust response as well. And then this is uh, uh, also the underlying principle for the vaccine design because of the um, enhanced protection. And so from the com uh, from the memory compartment, uh, compared with naive cells, there's a fundamental difference. Uh, for example, if we uh, isolate the T cells, uh, it's either naive cell or uh, central memory T cells. Uh, if we incubate them with a peptide. So for primary cells, uh, they require uh, three signal, including TCR, CD, uh, co-stimulation, CD28, and uh, cytokines to be able to uh, uh, induce uh, their responsiveness. 24-hour uh, culture of the naive cells with a peptide alone, it doesn't do anything. So they don't respond. However, if it's a central memory cells, and then 24-hour uh, incubation with the uh, cognate antigen without any um, other co-stimulation or even without uh, the MHC presentation, somehow they get activated in the dish. So it tells a robust difference between uh, naive cells versus central memory cells. And then uh, the key question is, um, what's the underlying difference between naive and uh, memory cell? So this is a uh, uh, review slides from uh, Dr. Wei Guo Cui, uh, my friend, uh, who highlighted during the uh, primary response, there's a, you can observe uh, very uh, kinetic differences in terms of gene expression. Uh, for example, uh, TBAT and ID2, they are hugely induced in effector cells or and their expression is maintained. Uh, of course, there are other patterns you see the down regulation after T cell activation and the transient down regulation uh, followed by uh, later on uh, restoration, at least the partial restoration in memory cells such as the TCF1 itself. And uh, so I just want to highlight a few genes uh, to show you that they are uh, genes such as the RUNCs and the CTCF. Uh, they, their expression uh, is rather relatively stable uh, by comparison, t is hugely induced, uh, TCF1 is re uh, repressed. So today's talk, uh, we are going to mention this uh, few quite, uh, factors quite a few times. So um, in terms of um, uh, fundamental difference between um, uh, naive and uh, memory cells, um, as you know that the transcriptome is different and there are a lot of work showing that uh, uh, on epigenetic level, uh, in, including histone mark changes and also uh, DNA isolation uh, capacity, uh, it's all uh, there are fundamental differences. However, less known is how the higher order uh, genome organization is play in this context. So um, I'm sure uh, we all um, quite familiar with this uh, uh, double strand uh, DNA they wrapped around the octomers of a histone. Uh, because the nuclear is a quite uh, tight space and then how they are folded together. So on the chromosome level, I just want to highlight this region. Each uh, chromosome is occupying their own territory. And then we see that each chromosome, if you zoom in to look further, you're going to see they can be separated into um, two uh, fundamental compartments. One is called the B, the other is called the A compartment. Um, the A compartment usually resides within the nucleus for the interior in the nucleus. Uh, they contain more actively transcribed genes. On the other hand, for the B compartment, uh, all those silent genes usually uh, uh, residing in this domain, uh, this uh, uh, compartment. If we look in further into the, uh, the compartment, we are going to see uh, uh, the typical uh, on high C, it can be observed as a topological associating domains, uh, also known as TADs. 
So this usually is like a mega mean, uh, mega base pair uh, level of uh, uh, insights. And then if you, we look into the tags itself, you're going to find a lot of uh, chromatin loops. Uh, these are, they are loops within loop, uh, loop uh, layered over other loops uh, is a complex uh, composition. And so one thing I want to highlight here uh, with for uh, the organization of the genome, and then there's a critical factor uh, called the CTCF. Uh, it's uh, playing multiple different roles at different uh, uh, levels of the gene regulation and the genome organization. So a few words about the CTCF. Um, so this uh, CDCF initially was cloned uh, as a transcription factor. Uh, this was reported in 1989. Uh, this is actually when the uh, Soviet Union was uh, still around and then uh, this is published in the Proceedings so, of uh, Academia of uh, Science of um, uh, Soviet Union. And uh, CDCF was identified uh, as a transcription factor that uh, positively regulating uh, chicken beta globin uh, expression. When you look at the structure, it has a long N-terminal um, tail and also C-terminal tail. And then in the middle uh, is the DNA binding domain. Uh, it's quite a characteristic. Uh, it contains 11 uh, zinc finger proteins, uh, which uh, bind the DNA directly. And the uh, initial uh, observation, although it's uh, considered to be a transcription factor, and later on it's found that there are two fundamental uh, roles for CTCF. One is establishing the insulation between the two tags, uh, the topological do um, associating domains. So uh, the fundamental role for in this capacity is to prevent the interaction between the two tags. And the other, uh, I, uh, in uh, within the tag, However, uh, CDCF can directly mediate uh, the enhancer promoter uh, interaction. Uh, in this case, uh, it can be a transcription factor or a transcription cofactor. So as uh, Chuan mentioned that my laboratory has been uh, working on uh, the transcription factor called the TCF1 and the LEF1. Uh, the TCF1 is a uh, T cell factor one, uh, the gene uh, is encoded uh, by uh, TCF7. So uh, nowadays it's used uh, interchangeably. Uh, this means the same thing. Uh, structure wise, um, so these are, uh, they all have the DNA binding domain uh, called uh, high mobility group uh, DNA binding domain. This is highly conserved among uh, this HMG um, family. And then these two protein, uh, they express in different isoforms. Well, the longer isoform, which is considered to be the full, iso uh, full length isoform, it contains a beta catenin binding domain. The short isoform, uh, it doesn't have this domain. Uh, for a long time, people are thinking the short isoform could function uh, as a neg uh, dominant negative. Uh, however, all study uh, show that that's not the case. It has also the critical function. And our earlier study demonstrated that these two transcription factors, they have intrinsic histone diastolase activity. And then it's a transcription factor at the same time, they can modify histone uh, directly. So over the years, uh, we found that um, these factors, they are critical for T cell development. They're also important for helper T cell uh, differentiation in particular. Uh, what's worth mentioning is that um, uh, their expression is lower in Treg compared with uh, conventional T cell. However, uh, they remain uh, important uh, for the immunosuppressive function of Treg cells. And uh, we later on uh, also studied uh, what they do in the context of T cell uh, immune mediated immune response in acute infection and chronic infection. Uh, today's topic is uh, uh, like a uh, continuation follow-up on our initial uh, observations showing that uh, these two factors, uh, they supervise the CD8 T cell identity, meaning that if you, uh, CD8 T cell, if they are deficient for TCF1 and LF1, they look like uh, CD4 cells. 
and uh, also they are critical for longevity and uh, secondary response uh, in uh, memory CDA T cells. So in the uh, chronic infection, um, so they are also a uh, critical role reported for TCF on the left, especially TCF1. Uh, this is the so-called uh, TPEX, the exhausted T cell progenitor cells, or sometimes I call it uh, TEX, TEX uh, stem cells. And it, TCF1 is critical for formation and uh, um, long-term maintenance of that particular population and is identified up as a biomarker for preferred uh, outcome uh, during tumor immunotherapy. So with that, uh, besides its transcription role, uh, over 30 years ago, it was reported that uh, for the HMG domains, uh, containing protein, uh, including TCF1, LEF1, they have the unique capacity when they bind the DNA, they, uh, when they bind to DNA, they bend DNA by 130 degrees, meaning that uh, it has some kind of a structural role. And there's a nature paper from Groshado and uh, Peter Wright. They show that uh, left one, uh, it um, uh, bend DNA and facilitate the TCR alpha uh, transcription. So this was uh, uh, quite a long time ago. And then, uh, it, you know, the structural role has been post uh, postulated and then uh, it was not directly addressed. So with these questions in mind, uh, we carry out a series of study uh, I'm going to share with you about our findings. So uh, today uh, I'm going to tell you uh, three short stories. One uh, is about the maintenance of naive uh, CD8 T cells and uh, effector T cell differentiation and memory T cell recall capacity. So the first one, um, so as you all know uh, that uh, the after injury, uh, the CD8 T cells as well as uh, CD4 cells, they, uh, they need to recover uh, in terms of cell numbers. And then uh, that's uh, critical for maintenance of the immune competence. And uh, the established pathway is that uh, IL-7 uh, and L15 mediated signal, uh, they are the critical driver. And both pathways, they activate STAT5, uh, 5A, 5B uh, transcription factors and uh, drive the transcription uh, to uh, produce pro-survival and uh, cell proliferation proteins. So that's very much established. And then in our, our study, when we uh, transfer uh, the naive cells, CD8 T cells into a rack knockout mice, which um, we consider is empty mouse that don't have any T cell or B cells. You can observe that the T cell uh, through a linear uh, cell surface uh, dye tracking, you're going to see they start to divide. Uh, this is within uh, 72 hours. However, if we transfer TCF1, left one deficient cells, they fail to proliferate at all. And the same thing was recaptured when we culture uh, the uh, Y-type or double knockout uh, CD8 cells in the XVO culture, uh, including uh, IL-7, IL-15, suggesting uh, TCF left, they are important for homeostatic proliferation and their responsiveness to uh, uh, both cytokines. And then the question comes, how does this work? And um, in, we then performed um, RNA-seq analysis uh, comparing Y-type and knockout cells and after, before and after 72 hour stimulation. What you can see here is that um, a lot of genes, they are not affected by uh, uh, TCF and LEF1 deficiency. However, uh, it only affects the genes that are induced by cytokines. And these genes, they are induced uh, after stimulation, uh, but if in the absence of TCF LEF, uh, they fail to be uh, induced. Uh, another critical information I want to mention that uh, what I'm showing you here is the TCF1 binding site in naive cells, meaning that these genes, they are preoccupied by TCF1. However, in spite of the binding, it, they don't contribute directly uh, to the gene regulation as a homeostatic condition. It's only after the stimulation, they start to show the difference. 
So that lead to the concept that uh, I'm advocating that um, uh, transcription factors, they have uh, the capacity of pre-programming uh, cell responsiveness um, in the different cell contexts. Just want to highlight a few genes here. Uh, these are all um, proliferation-related genes, uh, including uh, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases. Uh, this is um, uniquely affected uh, only after uh, cytokine stimulation. And we followed up with uh, mechanistic studies, and uh, this is through chromatin accessibility um, mapping. And what we found here, uh, long story short, this is, has been published last year, um, by examining the uh, transcription factor motifs uh, or the chromatin accessible site, uh, certainly TCF left is the top motif and also the other uh, critical uh, factor, well-established uh, transcription factor start five motif were found. Those are all uh, consistent, so the one I expected finding is identification of a CTCF binding site. Uh, so that uh, took us back a little, and we thought that why uh, CTCF would be uh, uh, functioning in this context. Uh, we then use a cut and run to map CTCF binding locations in uh, the four different conditions between white type and knockout before and after uh, stimulation. Uh, what I'm showing here, uh, I just want to highlight two. Clusters here is uh, the similar as the gene expression pattern. Um, CDCF binding is induced, but uh, uh, compromised in the absence of TCF left. And the other component is that uh, a lot of uh, CDCF binding site in the naive cells before, before stimulation, they were highly dependent on TCF left. And then we went on to show that the TCF left, they can physically uh, interact, they can uh, co uh, immunoprecipitate. We then used the high C analysis to uh, map genome-wide uh, chromatin interactions. Uh, I'm showing one, you one example. Uh, this is one pet, the topological associating domain. Uh, around uh, this is uh, harboring uh, the MIP uh, gene. So as you can see on the scale, this is a one million base pair uh, domain. And when we zoom in the MIP domain uh, around the MIP gene, you can see a clear difference between the white type naive cell and the white uh, and the no uh, TCF left double no cell cells. There's a uh, great reduction, and when we further zoom in, you're going to see a patches of interaction was aggregated uh, without TCF left. So the top of group, uh, uh, blue track is the TCF one binding location by ChIP-seq. You can see there's a cluster of TCF one binding. And the lower two tracks, they are uh, CTCF binding. Uh, you are going to see uh, that there's a, a strong overlap between the two transcription factor in terms of their binding site. However, when we take out the TCF left in the red track, you see the CTCF binding uh, was uh, abrogated, highlighting the uh, recruitment role uh, of CTCF by um, TCF1. Further, so in terms of uh, between uh, cytokine, uh, IL-7 and uh, 15 driven uh, chromatin uh, changes, uh, I'm, what I'm showing here is a comparison between naive and uh, cells and after stimulation. I just want to zoom in a little. Uh, again, uh, the top track is uh, uh, TCF on binding side, the lower is the CTCF binding locations. So for the green highlighted site, these are constitutive binding site of CTCF. And the yellow ones, uh, they are weak uh, in the naive cells. After cytokine stimulation, you can see the strong induction of uh, uh, CTCF binding. So what's interesting, uh, the, I just highlighted uh, one through four different anchors. So without stimulation, the interaction uh, between the two anchors is a fairly uh, background, it's quite low as well as the other pairs. After cytokine stimulation, however, you're going to see that uh, the newly induced CTCF binding site, they start to interact. And also the newly in uh, induced CTCF, they also interact with the pre-existing CTCF binding site uh, showing a robust chromatin interaction. So uh, in this context, when we look at the, uh, so this is uh, uh, the diagram that uh, we think what's happening uh, 
this is a so-called loop over loop, uh, loop within loop situation. And then in the knockout condition, uh, as summarized here, uh, in the naive condition, they are not different. However, um, in after the stimulation, because of reduced the CTCF induction, the corresponding location, their chromatin interaction is also compromised. Uh, so um, because of the identification of a CTCF, uh, we wanted to uh, uh, go on to see whether CTCF is also uh, important for homeostatic proliferation process and by uh, transferring into rag mice or ex vivo culture, we can see that uh, abrogating CTCF uh, also uh, uh, completely abolished uh, homeostatic proliferation. And then this was uh, kind of quite a satisfactory uh, to us. And when we do the RSEC analysis, uh, we also found that the CTCF knockout versus TCF left knockout, they have a shared group of genes. They all control the uh, cell proliferation. Uh, they have a shared uh, target genes. And uh, as a quick summary, I just uh, want to uh, leave you with this uh, orange uh, uh, pomegranate uh, hybrid, uh, highlighting that uh, homeostatic cytokines, they can cause extensive chromatin architecture changes to promote uh, cell cycle regulators. So also uh, during this process, the CTCF is mobilized uh, to access a new binding site. So what I'm showing here is this orange seed, they are mediating the interaction of the strong of the fiber. And the TCF1 here is the pomegranate seed. So because they are in there already, they function as an anchor to recruit CDCF, and then uh, this uh, new CDCF binding site in turn forms a new fiber uh, so that it will pro uh, promote the more uh, um, chromatin interaction on the downstream, uh, uh, downstream biological events. So the TCF1 is a critical anchor point. So uh, that's my uh, first uh, segment. Mm, the next I want to talk about the uh, effector CDA T cell differentiation. Um, by comparison, um, cytokine stimulation is uh, relatively um, mild. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you use uh, TCR stimulation, which is uh, more robust, we were thinking that now that the cytokine can mobilize the CDCF and the T TCR stimulation could do the same. And then uh, we used uh, in, in vivo infection model to uh, examine this. So as a background, uh, this is Sukek's review a uh, number of years ago. Uh, so the basic principles, uh, it stands. And then uh, at the effector phase, usually during the infection, the CDA T cell uh, pool is quite heterogeneous. You have, uh, at least there's a spectrum of uh, 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 heterogeneity, and then uh, they have different levels of uh, uh, the ability to generate memory T cells. Uh, some of them on the uh, one spectrum, uh, they considered to be a terminally differentiated called effector cells, and the other, they are memory precursor cells, they are more likely, like uh, highlighted in this graph, uh, they are going to have the high potential to generate memory T cells. So that's a uh, uh, largely accepted in the field. And um, again, I want to remind you about the dynamic uh, gene expression changes during the response. And uh, also this is the model. Uh, we use either Y-type or CDCF for conditional knockout uh, uh, P14 cells. Uh, uh, P14 is a TCR transgene. It recognizes LCMV epitope of uh, GP33. Uh, we transfer them those P14 cells into a uh, new host and then uh, challenged by uh, uh, LCM with Armstrong infection. And then uh, we uh, follow up with uh, at a different point to see what happens with the CDA T cell response. So uh, this, again, this is the mapping at the day eight effector phase. Uh, this, do, this cell do not include the memory precursors. We focus specifically on the uh, effector cells, looking at uh, fold changes between a CDCF binding site, effector compared with naive cells. You can see that in, the, in previous slides, you might notice that for the cytokine, uh, it may mobilize uh, 1,000, 2,000 CDCF binding site. And now uh, by TCR stimulation, this is on a different scale. 
you see 13,000 um, locations they gain CDCF binding site, and there are another 12,000 they lost the CDCF binding. Uh, clearly, it's very dynamic. And by performing uh, a taxic, uh, we see that uh, CDCF binding is highly concordant with chromatin accessibility uh, changes. Like uh, if they gain uh, CDCF binding, they gain uh, chromatin accessibility as shown here for the uh, CDK6 and another uh, critical transcription factor. Uh, you can see com back comparison top is naive and uh, this uh, black is uh, effector. Uh, they gain CDCF binding site and uh, at the corresponding location, uh, there's uh, induction or chromatin accessibility as well. And the other side is also true. Loss of uh, CDCF uh, lead to a close of chromatin. Uh, the accessibility is reduced. Uh, so we then performed uh, high C on effector cells and focusing on the on the this type binding uh, uh, CDCF binding site. Uh, dynamic changed versus uh, those uh, are not changed. So um, I know that in the field there are not a whole lot of people doing high C. I just want to. Um, uh, give you us, uh, you know, uh, if you're not familiar, I just want to show you how this was analyzed. So consider this is a CTCF binding site. Uh, we are collectively analyzing all the, the over 10,000 uh, new binding site. And we look at the high C data. If this is a center and all the uh, in chromatin interaction is spanning this one site, uh, if we do pile up analysis, uh, it will show in the, show up in the A region. If the binding site interact with uh, chromatin itself, this interaction will appear on along the line of B. So if the interaction occurs within uh, on one side of the uh, your site of interest, they will uh, appear in the triangle C region. And basically this information usually presented, uh, you can, present this or just rotate and make it a square to save some space on your paper. And this is how it looks. And then in this case, uh, when we look at the uh, uh, effector, newly acquired CDCF binding site, you can see a strong induction of uh, chromatin interaction spanning uh, this site up here in this A region. And then the last uh, CDCF binding site, their chromatin interaction is also uh, diminished. This is highly concordant. Uh, what I'm showing you here, the invariant unchanged CDCF binding site, uh, especially those with a CDCF motif, they function as an insulator, as I mentioned brief, uh, previously. You can see there's a little interaction spanning uh, in the A region. Uh, there's um, uh, very uh, 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 few interactions uh, showing that they are blue, and everything in the, for the interaction is in the C section. Uh, showing that they are outside, um, on either side of the CTCF binding site. So with this in mind, uh, I just want to highlight a few examples of comparing uh, naive cells versus uh, effector cells. So at the interferon uh, gamma locus and also uh, a chemokine locus t uh, you can clearly tell the different level of chromatin interaction. Uh, this, uh, the middle track is a CDCF binding site, uh, increase the CDCF binding and increase the chromatin interaction. And uh, the other side is true, a lot of genes, for example, um, the uh, CCR7 uh, gene locus associated with the memory um, cell fate, IL-7 receptor, and other genes, they are strongly interacting uh, in the naive cells, but those are all lost um, in the effector cells, consistent with their uh, gene expression patterns. So we used uh, the knockout uh, CTCF knockout uh, cells to examine how it impact uh, the CD8 T cell response. Uh, in terms of cell number, uh, it's substantially lower. Interferon uh, gamma production is compromised. Uh, Grand ZMB production, t expression is all affected by a deficiency of a CTCF. And uh, this is the expression pattern and the chromatin accessibility. I this gene loci 
you can see the reduction in the absence of CDCF in transcriptome and the chromatin accessibility. And uh, again, on the, on the scatter plot, uh, so what I'm showing here is a uh, effector, white type effector compared with the white type naive cells. These are gained CDCF binding site. And the, on the y axis is a white type versus knockout effector cells. Uh, clearly, white type is stronger. They appear uh, in the first, uh, the quadrant one. And we call this a congruent site because they make sense. They all uh, uh, very easy to understand. And then when we look at those uh, congruent site uh, by analyzing uh, the key motifs, we found the T-bat motif is on the top, uh, followed by Rung's motif. And suggesting in the effector cell, these proteins, transcription factors, uh, they could contribute to CDCF recruitment. And we next generated uh, uh, T-bat and the Rung's double knockout uh, effector cells, and we mapped the CDCF again. Uh, we can see a, a consistent production uh, in a reduction of a CTCL binding in the absence of TBAT and the RUNCs. And the one example can be found at the TBAT locus itself. And this, uh, this two site, uh, they induce the effector compared with the naive cell. And then uh, in the TBAT and RUNCs knockout, and, uh, and uh, the CDCF recruitment was abrogated. So these all were uh, kind of easy and uh, understandable. Uh, um, so there's something that didn't make sense to us and they changed the banner to, right, to red uh, so that to get more of your attention. So what happening, uh, with, I just mentioned this uh, green congruent site. They are a group of a site, uh, close to 2000 sites. They are in congruent site meaning that they are CDCL binding, they are lost in effector compared with naive cells. And then, uh, you know, uh, by natural logic, if the binding is lost, and then now you delete CDCF, and then it should not matter, right? And uh, so during the, you know, the binding is not needed to begin with. However, if we look at the comparison of chromatin accessibility between white type and knockout, in the knockout, the accessibility actually increased. So that's quite a counterintuitive one then uh, where CDCL binding should not matter, but now it matters. And then this was uh, uh, quite puzzling for uh, some time. And when we examine the toxic peaks, uh, you know, in the knockout, they are increased in uh, accessibility corresponding gene expression was also increased. Uh, as I briefly mentioned, uh, in the effector phase, the normal white type cell, you're going to see the memory precursor uh, showing higher expression L7 receptor and the low uh, KRT1. Uh, but in the knockout cell, they, are, they don't have the KRT1 high effector anymore. And mostly they are the memory precursor phenotype. And also, uh, showing here is uh, uh, the no call cell. They have a higher, uh, more frequent uh, expression of TCF1, suggesting that they are uh, the CDCF no call cell. They are biased toward the memory precursor fate rather than uh, giving rise to effectors. So uh, we went on uh, for some case studies to see uh, what's really going on, uh, why this, um, you know, this, this size, they do not make sense. And we look at a few memory associated genes like IL-7, uh, 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 not IL-7, uh, TCF1 itself, and also uh, cell, uh, this is CD6 to L, uh, a marker of central memory cells. So uh, in the middle track, you can see these are the CDCF binding site. It, they are strong in naive cells, but they are lost uh, in effector cells. But if we look at the outside, uh, not the cyan colored, but the green colored one, you're going to see there are constitutive CDCF binding site, uh, regardless whether it's a naive or effector. And using this anchor site, look at the uh, chromatin interaction in naive cell. So there's a strong knot um, outside this uh, incongruent site, and they are strongly interacting in the naive cells. And this strong interaction is preserved in effector, no matter what changes in, uh, within this uh, small domain. 
and then the knot doesn't change, meaning that the outside CDCF binding, uh, they are constitutive and they stay stable. And the same is true for uh, uh, the cell gene uh, and uh, another or a number of other genes as well. And uh, with this case studies, and then we want to generalize this, and then uh, we separately analyze the, this uh, incongruous side versus a congruous side to see their chromatin interaction. Uh, in the naive cells, you can see uh, that the interaction is quite strong at this incongruous side. And if we look at the uh, outside, um, uh, on the both side of the these critical sites of interest for the upstream and the downstream, uh, you see an uh, interaction within the realm, um, but a very little outside the realm of the uh, the subdomains. And then to further orient you, uh, I uh, uh, flipped this site. This is the incongruous site, uh, CDCF binding location uh, on either left or right. Uh, you see strong, stronger interaction. And then uh, you can summarize the, the boundary location uh, on the top and the interaction appears here. And by comparison, all the incongruous side, uh, they have more frequent, stronger interaction for the, the other um, CDCL binding side. They, they made sense, but they are, they are not marked by boundary uh, CDCF binding locations. So uh, again, uh, for the motif analysis of the incongruous site, we found TCF1 at the top. And then uh, by looking at uh, CTCF binding locations, uh, they don't bind to those congruous site to begin with in naive cells, but they are strong in the congruous site uh, because in the effector, uh, TCF1 is downgraded, downregulated. All these uh, all these uh, binding sites were lost. However, uh, on the last column, you're going to see that in the CDCF uh, knockout, some of the CDCF binding site, they are uh, restored. And you can observe that uh, in this uh, um, locus uh, as a sample, you can see that for CD TCF1 binding, they are there in naive cell, they are lost in effector white type condition. But if there's no CTCF and the T TCF1 binding site comes back, so this leads to the model, um, what we are proposing. We are thinking uh, the effector cells versus the memory precursor genes, they, they are distri distributed in different genomic locations. And uh, for uh, you can consider the, um, the structure-wise, uh, the memory precursor gene, uh, they are living in the house in a more protected environment. Uh, the regulation is within the house. On the other hand, the effector cell, they are in the yard. Um, they are more um, accessible to uh, uh, newly acquired CDCF binding either by itself or uh, mediated by uh, CP, uh, PBAT or RUNX recruitment. Uh, on the other hand, uh, within the house, uh, in the, uh, the, I call it the semi-insulated uh, structure, uh, in the house, uh, they are intrinsically regulated. However, uh, if you knock out the CTCF, and that means that you knock down the walls and everything uh, is open. Now, TCF1 uh, or other transcription factor can all come in to regulate uh, the memory uh, precursor gene, uh, uh, counterintuitively uh, inducing uh, TC, uh, the memory precursor gene expression. So that's uh, our current model. And then the other important thing uh, I want to highlight is that um, uh, dynamic regulation of uh, gene expression certainly is important uh, for T cell differentiation process, the transcription regulator, uh, they are uh, actively redistributed. These are um, the important regulatory means as well. Uh, we should not just look at the gene expression, we should look at uh, where they go uh, under different uh, physiological conditions. So, okay, uh, so this is my uh, second short story. Uh, there's a last um, uh, uh, last session. Uh, it's relatively uh, straightforward as well. Uh, we wanted to understand how uh, memory T cell, the enhanced uh, recall capacity, what's the underlying uh, 
mechanism in terms of in the uh, higher order genome organization. So again, we use the high C, uh, we already have high C data on the naive and the effector. We further performed high C analysis on the central memory, the CD6-2L uh, positive uh, memory uh, subset. So uh, for the high C analysis, the field has uh, uh, several problems. And the first one is that uh, usually the comparison is just limited to uh, uh, two conditions, uh, be comparing between one cell type versus another. And then uh, they also there are a lot of uh, disconnection between uh, uh, chromatin interaction changes and uh, gene expression changes. A lot of cases you see uh, fancy pictures about, oh, chromatin interaction changed, but when you look at the gene, the gene didn't respond at all. It, it doesn't matter. So how do, uh, do we uh, uh, fill in that knowledge gap? And then now, uh, so our collaborator, uh, Dr. Wei Chun Peng at the George Washington University, um, uh, they are the experts in uh, bio bioinformatics and the systems biology. So they came up with this uh, new approach uh, when you, uh, they started with uh, two uh, comparison of two cell types, and then uh, you, uh, they collect all the directional changes, either increase or decrease the chromatin interaction, and then perform the network analysis, and eventually uh, identify a specific chromatin interaction hubs uh, that's specific for one condition. And then uh, now we can uh, perform all the pairwise analysis and and identify the differential chromatin interaction hubs. And then when we aggregate the hubs together, you're going to see uh, a very clear pattern. Uh, this is a chromatin interaction hub, the interaction strength. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, in the effector cell, they acquire a lot of new interaction and some of them uh, they are preserved uh, in uh, central memory and some of them they are transient uh, lost. And some of the interaction they are permanently lost uh, in antigen experience cell. Some of them, uh, they, uh, re they get restored. And uh, for the pile-up analysis, basically is showing the same thing, uh, validating our finding. And this is the expression uh, clusters um, based on RNA-seq previously published. And then uh, uh, you can tell that this, uh, the pattern of the chromatin interaction and the transcriptome they are, uh, they are kind of uh, similar, they are similar uh, dynamics. And also uh, for the correlation uh, matrix, uh, if you see the, um, uh, the increased uh, enrichment, uh, usually it appears on the uh, diagonal direction, meaning that the correlation is uh, fairly strong, uh, showing that the chromatin interaction changes, um, uh, they are mirroring uh, transcription, uh, uh, transcript output as well. So again, a few examples. I uh, want to show you the interferon gamma locus, uh, IL-12 uh, receptor beta chain. Uh, so these are, uh, at this gene loci, uh, effector cells gain the new interaction, and the interaction is uh, inherited, carry over to memory cells, they persist. And by direct comparison of a uh, uh, naive cell versus uh, uh, central memory, uh, you can also observe that uh, in addition to the uh, chromatin interaction changes, there are a lot of CTCF binding uh, location, uh, binding stress changes. And then uh, all the highlighted regions showing that in naive, in, uh, uh, naive cells, the CDCL binding is either weak uh, or absent after stimulation use. Uh, in after the antigen experience in the central memory, CDCF binding uh, either get very uh, much stronger or acquire new binding site. And for the new binding site, if you look at the uh, transcription start site, and these are uh, at the promoter region. Uh, they are more uh, strongly marked with uh, uh, K4 uh, trimethylation, uh, showing their active transcription status. And for the distal region, they function more like enhancers. You see a stronger induction of K27 acetylation uh, in uh, concordant with the new CTCF binding. So then we asked whether uh, CTCF is uh, critical for the 
uh, recall response. And then uh, in this case, we use the CRIAR T2 to uh, inducibly uh, uh, delete CTCF. Uh, initially, we just transfer the fluxed P14 cells and uh, let the uh, central memory form uh, normally. And then we use the Mexican uh, treatment to abrogate uh, CDCF binding, uh, the CDCF expression. As you can tell, this uh, uh, CDCF bind uh, protein level is substantially diminished. And also, uh, all, somehow the interferon production and the TNF was, uh, production was not affected, but the CDCF deficient uh, cells, they are substantially smaller. They fail to effectively induce CD25 or CD69. So by RNA seq, uh, we also saw that uh, a lot of genes related to uh, gene translation, RNA polymerase, cell cycle genes, uh, many transcription factors, and glycolytic genes, and they are strongly induced after stimulation in naive central memory. But in the absence of CDCF, everything was compromised. Another uh, interesting observation we had is that um, uh, some of the genes. Uh, some of the uh, gene loci in the central memory. When we compare uh, uh, TCM versus uh, uh, naive cells, uh, they have chromatin interaction changes. Uh, but uh, in the, uh, if we compare the, their transcription level, they are not differentially expressed, uh, meaning that they are expressed at similar level regardless whether it's naive or TCM. However, the only difference would be um, these genes, they are induced after recall stimulation. And uh, clearly, um, our data is suggesting that uh, the newly formed chromatin interaction is preparing these genes for uh, recall mediated induction. And the same is true for CDCF binding site. Uh, in the TCM, uh, they acquire uh, new T CDCF binding site at uh, these genes, like uh, this uh, elongation, uh, translation, uh, translation elongation factors, uh, polymerase two, different subunit, uh, for B pathway. At the promoter region, they all acquire CDCF binding site. They are more poised to have a stronger uh, K, uh, K4 uh, trimethylation, but their expression is not different uh, in uh, uh, resting memory cells, but their expression uh, is going to be substantially different and also dependent on CDCF uh, during the recall response. So that uh, leads to the final conclusion. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, one of the critical mechanisms underlying the central memory cell uh, enhanced recall capacity, uh, there, there are new mechanisms. Their mechanism includes the novel acquisition of a CDCF binding site and the chromatin interaction hubs. Uh, they are important for the uh, dynamic gene expression during the primary response, but also pre-program uh, central memory cell for their um, recall capacity. So at least uh, from my point of view, what I see is that uh, in terms of 3D genome organization, the central memory cells, whatever the changes they acquire, uh, they are uh, most likely inherited from the effector rather than uh, built in de novo. So with that, uh, I want to acknowledge my uh, current and uh, uh, past members. And most of the work they are done by uh, Qiang Shan. Uh, now um, he's an independent investigator uh, in the Suzhou uh, University. Um, I think it's a immunology institute. And this is my collaborator at George Washington uh, University, Wei Jun Peng, and his uh, very talented postdoc, Xiao Qi Zhu, uh, and they contribute this uh, greatly uh, to our understanding uh, how to, uh, you know, analyze all the high throughput data. And uh, I also want to acknowledge the funding source. Uh, lastly, uh, I just want to advocate for myself. We have a postdoc position available. If any of you are interested, um, feel free to uh, uh, reach out and uh, along this line of work. And uh, uh, we also get into a tumor immunotherapy. Uh, I didn't have time to uh, show you the actual data we can certainly discuss. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you guys have any 
questions, I'm happy to answer.